Kia ora Canterbury and welcome to Canterbury Live. It is Tuesday the 30th of September. My goodness, it's the last day of the month and hard to believe in three months' time we'll be thinking, oh, tomorrow's New Year's Eve. Yes, three months. Frightening stuff. Well, Horata Games are coming up on the 8th of November and we had a family, uh, another family pass to give away and all you need to do is simply call Marianne on 03 three triple seven O double three or go to our Facebook page Canterbury Live make sure you like us and leave your details there and you go into the draw to win one of these wonderful family passes well coming up on today's show I meet up with Carsten Grimm and he's here to talk about mental health and about the well-being game and we met up with those two of the three wonderful sisters here to talk about the O'Grady sisters they're talking about how the beauties went bald for cancer so it'd be awesome to catch up with them but first up we're talking about our wonderful CBD in particular Sydenham and it's called Fir First Thursdays not Thursday but first there's um joined me now by Emma Wilson. Kia ora Emma Hi. welcome to Canterbury Thank Live. You. Thanks for having me. Hey now tell us all about First Thursday how it all come about. So First Thursdays is an international art event and overseas they run it with the galleries drive it to attract the traffic to the galleries as well as a younger crowd. Um, here in Christchurch we've adapted the model so that we can extend it out and we've included a night market, walking tours, a gallery, a gallery walking tour as well as a graffiti art walking tour. We've got artists, musicians, uh, exhibitions and food. Yeah so um, Sydenham's been chosen because historically Sydenham is an artisan based area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's five galleries in Sydenham, including one designer rug gallery, um, and there's 15 plus graffiti art murals, and it's just a really active hive of activity at the moment, and we couldn't really have found a better host. No, you did yeah. right. Sydenham has really taken on, if anything, after the earthquake, it's really taken on its own personality and identity, hasn't it? It has, yeah. It's really sort of blossomed after the earthquakes and there's been a lot of new sort of energy injected to the area so it's, it's really nice to be there. Cool. Um, I know we've got a couple of images about the events that are happening, happening around that time but graffiti art is a bit close to your heart and tell us why. Well I'm married to Wongi so um, we run a graffiti business um, but he does a lot of the the graffiti art murals around town and as part of First Thursdays they're going to be painting a new mural on the embassy wall so that's a quite prominent wall on Colombo Street in Sydenham and it'll be the third, third full repaint uh, brand new mural and they've started yesterday so they'll be finishing putting the final touches on Thursday night so hopefully people come down and have a look to check it out. And yeah. where's the inspiration come from the design that uh, Wongi and the team are creating? Um, they all have really individual uh, sort of styles. For Wongi, I know that he just likes to try new techniques. So whatever he can find that will allow him to do the sort of technique that he's wanting to try out at that time, that's what he'll go with. So yeah, I've tried to you know, persuade him to do things at particular times. <laughs> Manipulate really him from the air. Yeah. Um, has Banksy been a definite influence, you think, about the acceptance of graffiti as being an art form I'd by the say, wider media? I would say that because Banksy's work is stencil based and I guess compared to graffiti art it could be seen as a lot tidier and mm. neater, it's definitely gone a ways to help street art in general as as for graffiti art, it's still always sort of the taboo around holding a, a spray can. Um, you know, if anyone's seen Wongi, like he's got a big unkempt beard and, you know, <laughs> just some of the things that go with it is it puts, well, people have preconceived ideas and I think it has helped, but only so to a certain extent, yeah. Yeah, there'll always be that sort of that little bit of ignorance, isn't it? But You'll yep. get that in art because as, yeah, as we all true. know, art is in the um, eye of the beholder. And I think if if you didn't get that, then it would be a lot less boring. It wouldn't be so interesting. Yeah, it's nice to be a little bit controversial, isn't it? It's well, there's personal. nothing controversial about how wonderful this event is going to be for the whole family, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, it's all yeah. ages. So now let's talk about the 2nd of October, which is this Thursday. So this will be the first 
event? Yep, this will be the first first Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> first, you say that three times. And it'll run from five o'clock until 10 o'clock. That's right. So it's putting your spot to tell us about what's actually going to be happening that night. Okay. That's the, the first. Yep. Um, well, from five o'clock, there'll be food available. So we're hoping that people either come in for dinner or just don't go home for dinner from work. Um, there'll be food trucks. We're setting up an alfresco dining area with the live stage, uh, live music stage. So we're hoping people get up and dance. We've sort of booked the music acts to encourage that. Mm. And we're just trying to create, like I watch a lot of kung fu movies and in those they have a lot of communal eateries and there's always live music and the atmosphere that's created just always looks really awesome so we are sort of trying to create that but Christchurch you know yeah. type type of way um, so there'll be that going on and that's sort of snaking around through the night market which okay. has a lot of uh, local entrepreneurs as part of it cakes by Anna is one of them there's just going to be heaps of stuff in there that's unique and awesome um, there will also be 14 artists at work on the night. So we've got a range of art. There's performance art, um, Benita Danger Doll, Ruby Ruin. They're two of New Zealand's top burlesque dancers. So they're doing separate performances and at the end of the night they're doing a performance together. Um, each theme is, each event is loosely themed. So we've like started grandiose with Hollywood. Oh wow. And it's heyday. So um, they'll be dressed up. Ruby's in an award-winning costume, like a glamour girl, sort of 1920s. Um, there's also a pottery mandala. Um, that's as part, part of Form Gallery, and they're doing the clay where you stick your hands in them. So that's that's going to be really good for kids. Um, wow. Well, hey, I'd hold it there, Emma. You've teased us enough. If that <laughs> wasn't enough to get you down there on Thursday, down to Sydenham, to experience this wonderful event. It's the first Thursday. <laughs> I like it. Cheapers. Um, hey, thanks, Emma, for coming in. I'm no sure worries. it's going to be a great success, a wonderful, wonderful thing, especially school holidays. Yeah. Cool timing for the whole family to get down there. Hey, still stay with us after the break. We catch up with Millie and Richard. G'day, this is Fletch, your presenter of the TV show Classic Restos. It's the show where it's your chance to see completed restorations being shown, driven and enjoyed. Come on down to Fairy Mead Golf. Care for a game of paintball? How about some swings on the old driving range? Or on our par 3 nine hole golf course? Test your skills on the mini golf course or have a go at the air gun shooting range. Then relax at the Wow Cafe with one of our super succulent Wow Burgers. Whether you want to perfect your swing or are looking for a fun family day out, come down to Ferrymead Golf, 50 Ferrymead Park Drive, right next to the Ferrymead Heritage Park. Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24 seven for fuel and shop goods and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least six cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood. We're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood. What drives you? My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from more mobility. They recline back with a footrest. Then when you want to get out of them, they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Al Jazeera News, international news, right off the satellite, bringing you up to the minute coverage of world events. Al Jazeera News, weekday mornings at six o'clock right here on CTV. Well, Canteen is something, something an organisation we've definitely heard about and all the wonderful things they do, but how special it is that three sisters shared an experience together to do such a wonderful thing to raise awareness and money. And I'm very fortunate to be joined by Millie and Bridget O'Grady. Hi. Millie and Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> hey girls, look, the hair is slowly coming back to you. I mean, you're looking stunning. 
Thank you. Do, do you think it's actually enhanced you, your own personality, without having the girly locks and things? or? Yeah, I think it, you can't hide behind your hair anymore. No. Yeah, and girls do that, don't mm. we? We tend to do that, but you truly do look stunning. I did ask the question, though, do you think you'll grow your hair back to the long locks? I think I'll keep it short. Yeah? <laughs> Go through That's the pretty cool. It's the whole pixie look in it. Mm. Hey, let's, before we get into it, yeah, there you are, there the, the three girls. Wow, that's a cool picture. And you really did have long, long hair, didn't you? Yep. So what an extreme to go. And then, of course, I think we're going to progress, Doug, through to the actual um, event. And this was held at the Rickenham Mall? Palms Mall. Uh, Palms Mall, sorry. Mm -hmm. Palms Mall. And they had you set up there in front of everyone. Was that quite intimidating? It was. It was so cool to see how many people turned up, though, to support us. It was, yeah, yeah it was amazing. We could have asked for a better day, really. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, let's touch on St Bede's. I want to give a big shout out to the boys out at St Bede's. There was 160 students from St Bede's who ran for five days from yeah. Mount Cook to Christchurch. All That's insane, place. isn't it? And yesterday um, they were welcomed back. How was that? Was that a little bit surreal? Yeah, it's um, quite... Yeah, it's quite touching and moving almost because you see them they're absolutely knackered from the run, <laughs> like all strapped up, some of them like limping, but they're still going for it, they're still cheering and doing all their chants. Yeah, it's quite quite a surreal thing, yeah. Mm. And they, um, you've used Give a Little as your way of mm. donating money towards the cause. Um, do they raise monies individually or as a group? How did that work? They've done it and they each have to raise a certain amount of money, um, they okay. for about 500 each, um, but they've also got to give a little page set up as well um, and they've been running around with buckets and all sorts of things, emails, and yeah it's phenomenal, they they contact everyone possible. <laughs> and Bridget, a big team has to go behind them though of course because just mm. running is not the simple thing, I mean obviously for safety yeah. when you've got these boys running along across the road. Yeah I mean, they've got support cars, um, I know there was like a physiotherapist I think that was going around helping strapping them up towards the end and stuff wow. so there's, there's a big push and they have um, they have all of the boys that are still back at home at school. They have a big day where they also help um, support them and fundraise again as well. Yeah, How wonderful. Well, it's all about fundraising, and I think we've got some images now that will show you when you actually had your hair shorn. There you go, the Palms Mall. My goodness. And uh, the hairdresser, did it people, could people actually sponsor to actually cut your hair, or was it just you left it to the actual hairdressers to do well, it? I knew, yeah, my best friend did it for me because oh, um, cool. she's a hairdresser. Um, but we had kind of people that were quite special in our lives, so um, mum and her sister cut Bridget's hair and then dad shaved it because he did it the first time when yeah. she was on treatment. So yeah, it was an incredibly emotional day because there were so many mm. um, special connections and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it was very, very cool. And Bridget, what is it? Is it, I know you mean we went through such an uh, incredible journey with um, your cancer, but what was it like to actually have your sisters? I mean, I have th uh, two sisters. So I'm a family of three sisters, and we fought like cats and dogs. <laughs> Seriously. We still but, do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do? <laughs> but what a selfless thing to do and mm -hmm. show off love, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um, I think you might say we might be a little bit closer than the average family. Um, but, yeah, it's... I never thought I'd do it. I think it kind of came about as like, oh, would you shave your hair? And oh, only if everyone else did it. And, oh, would you shave your hair? Oh, no, everyone... So we're shaving our hair. <laughs> so yeah, it was, yeah, I think we're kind of like, we'll do it together and we'll support each other. We're always kind of doing the same thing, yeah. Well, the future yeah. looks very strong for you as sisters, doesn't it, going forward mm -hmm. for anything that comes up in the future for all three of you. Um, now let's talk about your Give a Little page. Um, I think you're a bit blown away, weren't you, by the support that you received. Can you tell us about the money you've raised? And you're still raising, actually, aren't you? Yeah, we've still got it open um, for fundraising and stuff. We're still getting the word out there. Um, I think it's, it's definitely a cause that will never just be a one fundraiser type thing. It's always an ongoing thing for us, yeah. Yeah, no, I think we're living proof of what Canteen can do for mm. members. Um, I mean, we all started and we we're incredibly shy and we were just doing our thing and Canteen's made us realise that we can actually go out and do phenomenal things um, and, you know, peer support is one of the biggest things when you've got people your own age supporting you, like the St Bede's boys. Um, it's just it's so empowering. And you know, you can just go out and take on the world. That's very cool, isn't it? Um, and now you're the president, aren't you, of the West Coast Canteen Committee. I mean, that, oh, that's pretty full on, isn't it? Yeah, um, I love it. I couldn't have asked for a better role. Um, I'm there for the members and the members drive me and yeah, we've got a pretty awesome team mm -hmm. down here in Christchurch and yeah, we we rock it really. <laughs> yeah. What's the goal for 2015? Because I think well and truly you've met it this year. So anything you've got planned for next year at all? Um, 
just know, spreading the just word. Just see what. Totally, and we're yeah. all about that. We're constantly spreading the word. Um, you know, and Canton's constantly growing. Yeah. You know, we're getting members, new members all the time. So, yeah, just letting people know what we actually were all about, because we're not just about supporting um, people through their journey at cancer. You know, it's just it's beyond that. It certainly yeah. is, and you've mm. definitely shown that, and you're showing a lot of heart. And I implore you, and I'm sure Canterbury do as well. You're a, your parents must be very proud to have three beautiful daughters inside and out. So well done to you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Stay with us after the break. We're talking about mental health. Arts 21 showcases the vast creative talent and minds that are making a name for themselves in Europe and beyond. Think outside the square with Arts 21. Warm yourself up with a delicious wintry meal at Hinton's Restaurant and Vineyard. Let the flavours of the country linger in your mouth long after your plates and glasses have been cleared. Enjoy an afternoon of comfort and class with great people. Hinton's Restaurant and Vineyard. Located at the foot of the Port Hills, Berrymead Golf offers a spectacular location for any occasion. Make a dream wedding a reality with private use of our green function room, outdoor garden courtyard, large marquee and stunning gazebo. Or for your next conference, enjoy the relaxed atmosphere of Berrymead Golf, offering a private, spacious conference room with special deals to make any break a true break. All with customised catering from the WOW Cafe. Berrymead Golf, 50 Berrymead Park Drive, right next to the Berrymead Heritage Park. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference more mobility makes. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. Your new home follows two families over 12 weeks through the process of building a brand new home. Hear from the homeowners and learn more from the builders and tradespeople as we follow their exciting journey. Your new home, Tuesdays at 8 on CTV. Well, we've been very fortunate this year on Canterbury Live. We've really tried to bring forward this whole conversation about mental health, as you know. And today is no exception. I'm joined by Carsten Grimm, who is a mental health promoter. Kia ora and welcome, Kia ora. Carsten. Thank you. Good to be here. It is good for you to be here, and it's good we're actually having the chat and the mm. conversation. I think that's wonderful, and especially from a male perspective as well. And we're talking about this whole warrant of fitness that men should be checking in on themselves as well as women, of course. Mm. How are you finding now? Are people opening up? Yeah, I think we're seeing a slow change in the culture. I think it's probably becoming much more acceptable to talk about our own wellness. You know, not just about our sort of mental illness. You know, for too long we've had this sort of conversation where well-being is all about being unwell. But actually now I think it's OK for us to be talking about our well-being, so actually having good mental health. And that's really quite pleasing to see that shift. OK, let's talk about the wellbeing game. What's that all about? So the wellbeing game is um, an initiative between the Mental Health Foundation and Community and Public Health, part of the CDHB. Mm -hmm. And it's a fun online activity logging game that anyone can play to boost their own wellbeing. And the aim of the game is really simple. It's just to accumulate wellbeing hours one hour at a time. And uh, you go onto the game, onto the website, thewellbeinggame.org.nz, and you log your activities. And it's based on the five ways to well-being, which are a set of evidence-based principles that anyone can use to improve their well-being. Is it the key then, do you think, Carson, is that finding a tool that helps you maybe to pick you up? Yeah, I think so. And the five ways to well-being, you know, it's based on fantastic science. And that's something that, you know, a set of things that anyone can do. And so that's connect, look after your relationships, um, be active, we know physical act, uh, act Exercise is good for our physical health, but it's good for our mental health as well. Uh, give, so cultivate this attitude of um, giving to people, being there for people, it's really good for our mental health. 
keep learning, which is the theme of Mental Health Awareness Week, which kicks off next week. So um, having new experiences and keeping things fresh and also um, take notice, so being present in the moment is really good for our mental health as well. It's a really simple thing to say, but it's quite true, isn't it? We find, I don't know, as Kiwis or people that we OA, we overanalyze, <laughs> don't we? Yeah, I think uh, there's probably some truth in that. But also we can use our thinking to be really you know, useful for us as well, mm. can't we? So I think a good question to ask is, our, is our thinking help, helping us to develop more sort of well-being in our lives? Or is it sort of tipping our balance and sort of you know detracting from our well-being? Good questions to ask. Yeah. So where did the game come from? Who's, so who's brainchild. Point yeah. Out? So the game sort of got started down here in Canterbury in response to the Canterbury earthquakes, mm -hmm. um, and since then it's sort of taken a life of its own really and become quite popular. We've been promoting it nationally over the last couple of days. But yeah, it got kicked off down here between the Mental Health Foundation and Community Public Health in response to recognising that Canterbur Cantabrians needed something to sort of help them look after their well-being during quite a tricky period. I mean, you must get some wonderful stories that come out each day from actually people talking and well-being game as well. Yeah. Is there any surprises that you find about who actually is looking for help? Well, I think um, what we're finding down here in um, Christchurch is that it's actually um, become a lot easier to have that conversation about well-being because of what we've all been through together. So I think that's been one of the pleasing things that we're seeing down here in Christchurch is that the well-being conversation is really not too far beneath the surface. And I think that's quite a positive thing because when we sort of acknowledge what we're going through and we sort of understand well-being, we can actually do some healthy things about it. How about if you can see someone that you know does have problems? You can mm. see them maybe from depression or something there. Can you actually motivate them to get help or is it like drugs or alcohol? If they don't, you know, the person's got to admit it themselves. Sure, yeah, I, I think probably one of the best things we can do if we see, you know, friends and whanau who are struggling is to be there for them, but also encourage them to get the help that they need. And there is so much help available too. A good place to start is to check in with your GP, your primary healthcare provider. And that's a really easy way to go and sort of have a look at your options. You know, you'll find something that will work for you as an individual. But I think you're right, you do need to sort of recognise that actually maybe my well-being is out of balance. Maybe I'm spending a little bit too much time towards the negative end of the continuum. Mm. I'd like to spend more time actually at the positive end of the wellbeing space and maybe I should get some help to try and get up that positive end. But I guess the one thing though, if you're a happy person, it could be frustrating seeing someone that's not. It's like, oh, just, you know, go, and go, for, it. go for a walk, oh, sure. get over it. Yeah, sure. That probably isn't the best... Yeah, that's probably not no. so helpful. But I think we just need to sort of recognise that we've all got, you know, a different, say, well-being profile. Mm. You know, what's, what's good, what's good for you might mm. not be fantastic for me, but I do need to figure out what works for me and sort of build it into my day. And, and I think, you know, that's something that we saw out of the JK ads that were really useful. I yeah. sort of benefited from that myself, actually. Sort of being allowed to think about what's good for my own well-being and then sort of finding ways to build it into my day-to-day -day life to keep my well-being topped up. Okay, so let's get, get the, the basics here. So where can we find this well-being game? We so want to have wanna, a, a little play tonight. You want to go to thewellbeinggame.org.nz and you can sign up as an individual or you can get a team of friends together or work colleagues to form a well-being co coalition or team. Um, the game kicks off on Monday, but you can sign up now and start playing. And we've got a bunch of sort of fun spot prizes to give away as well. And the more people that you encourage to play the game gives you a chance to enter a Air New Zealand Mystery Escape for Two. So we're encouraging people to really participate this year and look after their own wellbeing. I can see this is a wonderful thing for a workplace, definitely. I yeah. think a great way to actually broker conversation and to help out those that maybe just don't put their hand up. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today and all the best for next week. Thanks Mental very Health much. Week. Great. It's um, been wonderful meeting you. Now, stay with us. We have Atlas with Crawl. Very cool. Join me tomorrow. We have Christine Woodhouse talking about the Women's Lifestyle Expo and much more. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow.